How well are you able to understand new English vocabulary in a conversation with a native speaker? Well, in today's lesson, I'm going to test your abilities and teach you some cultural knowledge that will be useful and interesting to you. So stick with me and let's begin today's lesson. Today's lesson includes three kind of prepared stories that I have for you about some of my favorite American athletes. Americans do love sports, so it's a great way to learn about American culture and just maybe some interesting facts that you haven't heard before. After each story, I tell you I'm going to test your knowledge. I'm going to do this by giving you questions and seeing if your listening was accurate. These questions will mostly be multiple choice, so hopefully they shouldn't be too hard. Make sure to comment how successful you were in today's quiz and let me know which parts were the most helpful for your English vocabulary. Let's start off our first story, which is about American football. The first story I'll tell you as if we were just having a friendly conversation is about the upcoming Super Bowl. I'm going to tell you some things you should know about football. Of course, I mean American football and not soccer. The Super Bowl is coming up, which is the championship for the National Football League here. Last year, 102 million people watched the Super Bowl. This is crazy because it means one third of Americans were watching the same thing at the same time. This year, the game is between Tampa Bay and Kansas City. The quarterback, Tom Brady, is going to make his 11th Super Bowl appearance. Some people call him the GOAT, which means the greatest of all time. The quarterback for Kansas City is Patrick Mahomes. He's only 25 years old. Compare that to Tom Brady, who is 43 years old. When you think about it, Tom Brady played his first Super Bowl in 2001 when he was only 24 years old. In 2001, Patrick Mahomes was only about six years old. I wonder if Patrick Mahomes will play as long as Tom Brady has. Okay guys, I hope you liked my first kind of story that I told about American football. And I think that you probably learned something new about Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to be quizzing you on the sentences that I said in the story. And it will be pretty much just multiple choice. So it shouldn't be too hard. Again, if you want to go to the link below, there's an email you can get that has this quiz on there. It has the answers and it has the transcript. So that will help you study this conversation even more. So while I'm reading the questions, I want you to think of what your answer will be before I tell you the correct answer. And I'll explain why the answer is correct and why some of the answers are incorrect. Here we go with number one. The blank is coming up, which is the championship for the National Football League. Is it the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl? the super coal, or the super dole? Think about your answer. This one is pretty easy, but if you've never heard of this word before, I can see why it would be difficult. The answer is the super bowl, the second answer here. So the super bowl, I really couldn't find why we call it that. We don't use this word for any other championship game in a sport except for American football and the NFL which is the National Football League here. The Super Bowl and the Super Bowl sound super similar, but Super Bowl, like a Super Bowl of food is the answer. <laughs> Let's move on to number two. These are going to be a little bit more difficult now. The quarterback, Tom Brady, is going to make his 11th Super Bowl game, his 11th Super Bowl shot, his 11th Super Bowl appearance, or his 11th Super Bowl throw. Give you a second to think about your answer. The correct answer is 11th Super Bowl appearance. Now in sports, in championships, we often say that an athlete has appeared in this championship game before. So this just means they've played in it before. So you could say make his 11th Super Bowl game. It sounds a bit odd, 11th Super Bowl shot. Maybe, but I said 11th Super Bowl appearance. That's the most common way to say they were in the championship game before they appeared in it. And 11th Super Bowl throw, that would be a different sentence. It would be talking about him actually throwing the ball, whereas I'm just talking about him being in the game, making an appearance. So the correct answer is appearance. He has won six of the Super Bowls that he has been in. Some people call him the blank, which means the greatest of all time. Okay, do you remember the acronym for the greatest of all time? I'll give you a second to think about it. There's no multiple choice here because it should be pretty easy. 
greatest of all times is G-O-A-T, which means the GOAT. I've taught this before in slang lessons, but it's, it's a useful one to know. We say the goat, and we don't mean the animal. We mean the greatest of all time. We often use this phrase when we're talking about athletes or rappers. Number four, the quarterback for Kansas City is Patrick Mahomes. He's only 25 years old. Blank that to Tom Brady, who is 43 years old. Okay, let's fill in the blank here. Show that to Tom Brady. Contrast that to Tom Brady, compare that to Tom Brady, or hold that to Tom Brady. Think of your answer. The correct answer is compare that to Tom Brady, who is 43 years old. That's a pretty common phrase, compare that. It just means like he's 25, he's 43, we're going to compare them or put them next to each other and see the big difference. Now, you could maybe get by by saying contrast that to Tom Brady, but usually in English, in this situation, we say compare that to Tom Brady, who is 43 years old. And show that and hold that would just not make sense in this situation. So we have to say compare that. When we want someone to look at two things next to each other, we say compare that. We start our sentence with compare that. Number five, this is the last question before we move on to our next part of the quiz. When you blank about it, Tom Brady played his first Super Bowl in 2001 when he was only 24 years old. In 2001, Patrick Mahomes was only about six years old. When you talk about it, when you worry about it, when you chat about it, or when you think about it. Now, all of these words can be used as a phrasal verb with about it. So think really hard which one makes sense. Think of your answer. The correct answer is when you think about it. Now, this is just a very common phrase that English speakers say when they're just kind of talking about an idea or talking about something interesting an interesting fact when you think about it. So again, we're kind of comparing these two athletes, we're putting them next to each other, and when you think about it, it's very interesting that Tom Brady is so much older that when he did play his first Super Bowl or his first championship game, the other quarterback, Patrick, was only six years old. When you think about it, that's really interesting. So the phrase is when you think about it. That was your first five questions in today's quiz. How did you do? Our next story that I'll give you a quiz on is about basketball this time. And I'm going to talk about my favorite player in the United States, LeBron James, of course. LeBron James is without a doubt the best player in the NBA. Last year, he played his second season for the Los Angeles Lakers and won the championship. LeBron has played for three different teams in the NBA, and there was some controversy when he left his first team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, for the Miami Heat. You see, LeBron is from Cleveland, and the city loves him, but he thought it would be the best thing for his career to play for Miami. Not to mention, living in the city of Miami is much nicer than Cleveland. I can't blame him for that. The cool thing about LeBron James is he was loyal to his city, he went back to play for Cleveland and in 2016, he won a championship for them. Now LeBron plays for Los Angeles. I think he has many seasons left to play before he retires. He has hinted that he hopes to someday play with his son LeBron James Jr., who is only 16 right now. I'm not sure if it's realistic or not, but it would be epic to see a father-son duo on the same team in the NBA. Question number six, LeBron James is without a blank, the best player in the NBA. Is he without a wish, without a hope, without a doubt, or without a hitch? These are all common expressions in English, so think about which one makes sense. Make sure you have your answer. The correct answer is without a doubt. So there is no doubt that LeBron James is the best. He's just so much better than all of the other players in the league. He's very dominant. He's won so many championships and MVPs, which means most valuable player. He is without a doubt the best player in the NBA. If I had said without a wish or without a hope, 
that would mean he is not the best player in the NBA. And a common phrase is without a hitch. This phrase just means that it is without a problem. It doesn't make sense in this context here, but if you want to say something happened without a problem, you can say without a hitch. Time to move on to question number seven. LeBron James has played for three different teams in the NBA, and there were some blank when he left his first team, the Cleveland Cavaliers for the Miami Heat. Now, if you're not sure, Cleveland and Miami are both the names of American cities. So there is one team called the Cleveland Cavaliers and one team called the Miami Heat. Now, think about what word fits in this context. Is it there was some controversy, there was some problems, there was some news, or there was some agreement? Which word did I say while telling you the story about LeBron James? Think of your answer. The answer is there was some controversy. Now, controversy is a very formal word for problems or criticism. So people criticized LeBron James because he left Cleveland for Miami. He was from Cleveland. He spent his entire life in Cleveland. And he said that this team just isn't good enough, so I'm going to leave for Miami, which caused some controversy or some criticism. Now, there was some news, but that doesn't really make sense here. And agreement is the opposite of controversy. If people are agreeing on things, there is no criticism or problems about it. Question number eight. Not to mention living in Miami is much nicer than living in the city of Cleveland. I can't blank him for that. I can't hurt him for that. I can't believe him for that. I can't like him for that. Or I can't blame him for that. Choose your answer. Which did I say in the story? The correct answer is I can't blame him for that. When you say I can't blame you, it means I can't question your decision or I can't criticize your decision. I would make the same decision. So for me, personally, this is my story. I think Miami is a beautiful city. It has a beach. It's right next to the ocean. It's very colorful. Whereas Cleveland is a little grayer. And by that, I mean the weather is just terrible. It's in the middle of the country. There's not much to do or see there. So I can't really blame LeBron James for wanting to leave Cleveland to live in a beautiful city like Miami. If you can't blame someone for something, it means you can't question why they did it. Now, I can't hurt him for that or I can't like him for that. These two words could make sense in this sentence, but not in this context. So that's why those two are not correct, and I can't believe him for that. If I said, I can't believe him, that means I don't know why he did that. But in this case, I can't blame him, so I do know why he did that. So that answer does not make sense either. All right, you guys, you're doing awesome on this quiz. Good job studying so far. Let's move on to question number nine. The cool thing about LeBron James is he was blank to his city. He went back to play for Cleveland and in 2016 he won a championship for them. Was he nice to his city, helpful to his city, perfect to his city, or loyal to his city? Which adjective fits the best here? Think about your answer. The correct answer is he was loyal to his city. When you show loyalty, you show that you care about something so much that you are always either willing to come back for it or fight for it. So in this case, even though it's just a sport, he was very loyal and he went back to his city even after leaving one time. And I think this mural of LeBron James is really cool because it just shows how much they love him there. He is what we call their hometown hero. He's lived there for most of his life. He grew up there. His family's from there. And so he's kind of the city of Cleveland's hero. Let's move on to the last question of this section, number 10. He has blank that he hopes to someday play with his son, LeBron James Jr., who is 16 years old right now. So LeBron has blank. And his son is named after him. He's also LeBron James, but he is junior. So he has hoped, he has hinted, he has spoken, or he has said. 
Think about your answer. The correct answer is he has hinted. Now, he has maybe hoped as well, but when I was speaking, I said he has hinted that he hopes to someday play with his son. He has spoken that. This does not make sense here. You cannot say he has spoken that. He has said that. Yes, that makes sense, but he doesn't actually say it. He has hinted at it. So he constantly is saying, like, maybe I'll be around when my son's in the league, but he's never just said, like, I won't retire until my son is also in the National Basketball Association. So if you're hinting at something, it's sort of like you are saying that you want to do it in the future, but you're not sure if you're going to do it or you're not positive. I hope that you liked learning something about LeBron James. He's an amazing basketball player to watch. I don't know if you watch basketball or not, but maybe if you start, you'll be a big LeBron James fan. Let's move on to my third story that I've prepared for you today, and it's about another one of my favorite athletes, Serena Williams. One of my favorite American athletes is Serena Williams. She is inspiring to watch on the tennis court and has been so dominant in her career. I think it is especially crazy that Serena Williams is a mother now and competes at such a high level. Serena is the highest paid female tennis player. Her career winnings are over 92.7 million. That's not counting the money that she's been paid by her sponsors like Nike, Gatorade, and Wilson. Think about it, Serena is not only an amazing athlete, but she's a mother too. That's not an easy thing to do. Overall, her passion for the game really shines through on the court. She is 39 years old and still playing at the highest competitive level. Woohoo! We've made it to question number 11. You guys are doing great. Don't give up just yet. You're almost to the end of this quiz. Let's go with number 11. She is inspiring to watch on the tennis court and has been so blank in her career. She has been so winning in her career. She has been so cool in her career. She has been so perfect in her career or she has been so dominant in her career. Which adjective did I mention in this story when talking about Serena Williams? Think about your answer. And the correct answer is she has been so dominant in her career. Dominant is a very advanced English adjective. Add it to your vocabulary. It means that you win again and again and again. Perfect is very similar to dominant, especially when we're talking about sports. If you have a perfect record, you've never lost a game. Um, cool here wouldn't really make sense. And winning, she has been so winning in her career, could make sense. But I said dominant when I was talking about Serena Williams. So the correct answer was dominant. I think it is especially crazy that Serena is a mother now and she's still blank at a high level. She still competes at a high level, she still completes at a high level, or she still plays at a high level. Think about your answer, only three choices here. The correct answer is she still competes at a high level. Now I tried to trick you because compete and complete sound very similar except for that L, and complete just means finish, so it doesn't make sense here and she still plays at a high level, yes, you could say that, but when you talk about someone competing, it means they do very well at a high level. So not only do they still play the sport at a high level, they are winning games and they are being very competitive if they compete. Question number 13. Serena Williams is the highest paid female tennis player. Her career blank are over 92.7 million and that's dollars. So what is over $92.7 million? Is her money, salary, winnings, or prizes? Think about which answer makes the most sense in this sentence. The correct answer is winnings, her career winnings. So in sports, the money that you win as a prize is called winnings. So we could almost say prizes here, but winnings makes the most sense. Her career money are over 92.7 million. That one does not make sense. Her career salary doesn't make sense. And when we talk about a salary, we only talk about what you make in a year, not necessarily what you make over your whole career, which is many years. So the correct answer was winnings. 
So question number 13 talked about Serena's career winnings or the money that she has earned over her career. Let's talk about question number 14. That's not counting the money that she has been paid by her blank like Nike, Wilson, and Gatorade. So you probably know that Nike, Wilson, and Gatorade are all companies. But what did I call them in this story? Did I call them friends, payments, advertisements, or sponsors? Think about it for a minute. These are all sponsors. So the correct answer is sponsors. Now these companies could be considered advertisements for her because she always wears, you know, Nike shirts and she always uses Wilson tennis gear and she drinks out of a Gatorade bottle. So usually we talk about a s advertisement as being something like that you can see. Like on TV there's advertisements or on a billboard there's advertisements. Payments doesn't make sense here, and they're obviously not friends. You can't really have your companies be your friends. So sponsors, companies that pay athletes money to wear their clothing or use their product are called sponsors. Here is your last question of the day, number 15, so I hope that you get it correct. Overall, her passion for the game really blank through on the court. Really shines through, really shows through, really appears through, or really finds through? There's really only one answer that makes sense because this is sort of a phrasal verb that we use in English. So think about which answer makes the most sense. Which did I say in the story? The correct answer is shines through on the court. When you say that something shines through, we're talking about a personality trait or something about someone can shine through. So in this case, Serena Williams' passion shines through on the court. It means that you're able to see it really well. You can see her passion by the way she hits the ball, by the noises she makes, by the smile on her face when she wins. So shows, appears, and finds, they do not make sense with the word through in this sentence, even though they all kind of mean similar things. When we talk about a positive personality trait showing for someone, we talk about it shining through. Amazing job on your listening quiz today. I hope that you feel like you were able to practice with me listening to the American accent and also that you learned some new American cultural knowledge and English vocabulary. If you like learning natural English in a very casual, comfortable way like this, you're going to want to subscribe to my channel and like this video just to help support me. Thank you in advance. And if you're looking for another great way to practice today, go ahead and click on my conversation lesson and we can pretend to have a conversation and you'll get to practice your speaking today. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Good luck studying English.